Hey guys, it's Craig. I'm going to show you how to use the IntelliJ IDE with the Lock Closure plugin for closure development. So I have a folder here called Projects that I've encrypted using Espionage. And I'll double click on that to unlock it. And now that it's unlocked, I can go ahead and launch the IntelliJ IDE where I'll create a project uh, within that folder. So first you'll want to go into the Plugin Manager and get the uh, Closure plugin. There it is. So after it's done uh, downloading and installing the Lock Closure plugin, we restart the IDE so that it can load it up. And now we can go ahead and create a new project. We'll choose that encrypted folder. And we want IntelliJ to put all the files into a subfolder of that. So we'll create a subfolder called um, Closure Test. By default, IntelliJ for some reason doesn't choose the uh, the JDK by de uh, <laughs> by default, but it points us in the right direction, which is in System Library Frameworks JVM um, Java VM Framework, and as you can see, there's a whole bunch of versions in there. We'll just pick the current JDK, which is a symlink actually that points to 1.6, and we'll enable closure for this project and that will actually download Clojure for us. So now that that's uh, done, what it will do is first it'll index the project and the reason why it takes a little while is because the Clojure.jar file contains a whole bunch of classes and uh, source code as well and that's useful because it'll let us uh, do various things like look up documentation for closure functions and go to their declarations and we need to wait for it to finish so that we can go into the module settings where I'll show you how to add the documentation for the entire uh, JDK um, so that we can use the quick definition look lookup for that That's located under SDKs, Documentation Paths. And then it'll be under the home directory in the current JDK. This will you know, be different for different operating systems and whatnot. But basically, we want to add the API folder. You can also uh, just have it pull it from online. Um, Okay, and now let's add a closure file to this. So, by default, um, the settings for IntelliJ are pretty nice, but it does do some weird things. Like, for example, let's define a function here, call it foo, uh, print a var called bar. And you'll notice that if I click past the end of the line, it'll let us click there. Uh, I want to turn that off, and you can do that by going into the editor and disabling that feature called Allow Placement of Carrot After the End of Line. Um, and there are a whole bunch of other settings here that you can look through. Uh, something else that I like to set up are key bindings, and you can do that under the key map create your own, uh, you'll have to copy one, just call it mine, oops, go back in there, and then under editor actions, um, I like to set up some basic Emacs-like bindings, even though it already has uh, Emacs bindings, I like to combine them with the OS 10 bindings, so we can do this here. Control A in Emacs, 
we'll put it at the line start and control E puts it at the end all right now let's just go ahead and run this so there are two ways of doing this we can edit uh, these configurations and add a closure script configuration we'll call it test and that'll run the uh, test.clj file in a REPL well it doesn't have to but uh, we by checking that box it'll run it in a REPL and then pull that up and we can call foo and voila it works and there's actually two ways of running uh, a script file in a REPL that's the first way and that'll actually give you this warning because the log closure plugin is a bit out of date hopefully they'll update it to use uh, closure.main instead of closure.lang.repl um, and the other way of running a uh, REPL is to go into the tools menu and choose load file to REPL and that'll run it slightly differently where you don't get that deprecation warning okay um, so let's just have a look at some of the features uh, and support for closure that IntelliJ has so one thing you'll notice is that uh, these functions are emboldened as you type IntelliJ does analysis on the code so you see that if I change it to that that's not a real function and so it won't be in bold and we can look up the documentation on it by doing a, a quick documentation lookup or control J we can also jump to its declaration by choosing declaration which is currently bound to command B and that'll take us to its declaration in the closure source. So another thing that we can do that's really nifty is auto completion. And we do that by hitting I think it's uh control space, yeah. And it even shows us the arguments that functions take. So that um, you can uh, find the shortcuts to it uh, either by changing them in the key map or looking them up uh, under code then complete code so one other thing you might want to do is set up IntelliJ to work with Liningen and you can do that by uh, there is no Liningen plugin but one way I figured out that I can have that set up is by calling Liningen through ant. And I'm not going to go through all the steps, but basically you create a build.xml file and create targets. And then there's an exec command which will run a shell command. Uh, and you can tell it to run the Liningen command and pass it various different arguments like build or compile and all that. And then add the ant build file here. Okay, so that's really all I have to show you. Um, go have uh, fun with Clojure now, and uh, take care.